Hi everyone, this is a Wildlife Bio Gal. I'm live from a TWS uh, 2016. It's the uh, last day here. Um, so we're here um, at the poster session. So uh, just in a couple of minutes, I'm gonna throw it over to uh, Lee Ann and she's gonna talk about all the awesome owl pellets and rodents and all the amazingness that they do up in Canada with that research. But uh, just to let you know, I'm gonna try to get a few more uh, periscopes uh, later today to uh, close out uh, TWS. And if you guys have any questions, obviously feel free to tweet me at Wildlife Bio Gal. Uh, get a hold of me from any of those platforms. Go to wildlifebiogal.com to be able to um, see uh, all those links to the different platforms. I'll be uploading this later to uh, YouTube and also making a podcast out of it, which I'll put up on SoundCloud. It might not necessarily be today, it might be a little bit after the conference, but those will be out there for um, all of you. So with that, I'm gonna throw it over to Lee and between pellets and traps uh, change 
patients with allogenous and habitat type. So habitat type here, we're just uh, broadly categorizing uh, the type of landscape that the study was conducted in. Uh, so we're looking at grassland studies, forestry studies, agriculture studies, um, and then allogenous is just the genera of the So we use uh, both uh, rarefied richness and rate dissimilarity to look at uh, species richness and uh, the uh, small mammal community composition. Uh, and we just use AIC model selection and uh, uh, ANOVAs uh, to look at uh, how similar those two methods are. And what we found is that the intercept only models were the ones that came out on top. So there's really no difference uh, regardless of where the study was done and what owl genera was used. So that was also very exciting for us uh, because it means that regardless of uh, which of these 14 owl species you use, um, you're going to get uh, uh, a higher diversity estimate, but you're also going to get very similar community composition uh, if uh, compared to tracks. So that's, uh, that was very exciting for us because it really expands uh, the applicability of our methods. Uh, so at the end of this, uh, we decided uh, to um, advocate for the use of our sampling methods, but, uh, specifically for broad scale uh, landscape level studies of small mammal uh, diversity and community composition. So this type of um, sampling method would be great if you wanted to go out and survey like a national park for your small mammal uh, communities, if you wanted to go out and do uh, look at um, uh, landscape level habitat associations or impacts of like agriculture, uh, this type of sampling method would be really great for that. Uh, and you can find the study uh, uh, published in Methods in Ecology and Evolution. It was published in January of this year. So if anyone has any questions afterwards, where can they get a hold of you? Uh, you can get a hold of me at leanneheisler at gmail.com. And I'm also on Twitter. So this is my, my Twitter tag, I guess. <laughs> Twitter handle, awesome. So thank you so much. So yeah, if you guys have any more questions, definitely get a hold of Leanne uh, through those different formats. If you've got uh, other questions, feel free to get a hold of me at Wildlife Isle Gal. And, um, with that, I'll just remind you, I'll be uh, reposting this up on YouTube and also making a podcast out of it on SoundCloud. It'll be probably after the conference that those go up. And then I'll be trying to get a few more uh, periscopes done before the end of the uh, conference here. So you guys can meet a few more researchers. But other than that, uh, this is the last day here at TWS. So if you guys haven't been here, make sure you come next year. It's going to be amazing. It's in New Mexico, correct, I believe? I so, yes, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, we're going to sign off for right now from Raleigh, and hopefully I'll see you guys a little bit later today with a few more researchers. So have a good one.